Companions Assemble. Okay guys, today we are gonna go through the optimal party composition for your first or maybe next playthrough or maybe for a long awaited PS5 release. I looked into it as I myself just went with the vibe of the first playthrough, but sometimes I thought it would be nice to get a little bit more out of everyone and maybe give them all a specific role for better synergy. So before I begin, I have to say I don't take all the credits here since I researched a little bit and one user on Reddit named Lucky Turnip made a pretty great guide on this topic. I will also link it in the description but i just want to show it to you today because not everyone is on reddit so let's just get into it so the general idea of this is since that companions have the fixed race and background which is usually tied to the story and personality we don't want to change everything about this and especially not do the complete opposite we kind of want to remain true to their origin so we will go over a quick overview to our companions because they will have some kind of specific role in combat with the following builds like lasalle and shadowheart are gonna be like the tank role. they will take most of the damage and try to prevent enemies from reaching our others. Gale and Will would be our magic boys. Their task is to deal ranged magic damage and a little bit of AoE damage. Then we have Asterion and Karlach, which will be the heavy hitters. They will be dealing ranged physical single target damage. So the main thing here is you can just take one out of the three categories and you have a pretty good team. Then if you think, I don't know, Shadowheart is getting boring with the time, just switch it out with Lasalle because both have our tanking role. The only important thing to note here is, to make everything work pretty flawlessly, it would be nice to create an all-rounder for our main character. Someone who takes the support role and handles most of the aspects outside of combat, since the builds are more combat focused and not for the interactions around the world and so on. So just keep that in mind for this video. So. But let's have a quick look over the companions and what they're gonna do. After that, we are just gonna go through all the levels and build them and that's basically it. So let's begin with our tanks, Lasalle and Shadowheart. Lasalle's build will be a fighter paladin multi-class. She is going to specialize in battlefield control and her whole purpose is to keep enemies where they belong, near her and away from everyone else in the party. Doing damage is like a little bit extra for her, it's not the main focus of this build. He's gonna be like the one who is at the choke point and use like her attacks and polar master plus sentinel and different maneuvers to stop enemies from passing. And with her strength and the athlete feet she can also jump pretty far which are just increased with her Kifyanki psionic so we are pretty mobile with her too and can jump between the enemies we want to prevent to get any further. With our dear Shadowheart, we will remain almost as a pure cleric with a little bit of a Storm Sorcerer put into it. Why Sorcerer? Because we are gonna use the constitution saving throws we get from this and get the bonus action fly, which will be able by casting a spell for just mobility and getting away from enemies, so just that we can do some stuff. Then with our main class, the light subclass of the clerics, they give us warding flame for even further defense and some nice offensive spell. We can use the spirit weapon spirit guardians which are just nice baseline damage and just very efficient use of spell slots with her attacks we're just gonna start with the sacred flame that's our main damage source and then when we get higher up we can just upcast leveled spells such as inflict wounds and so on but we will go through everything so for asterion we are gonna go with hand crossbow one hand crossbow two and we are gonna make pew pew and that's basically it we are gonna make him a ranger rogue fighter multi-classer and we are gonna specialize in dual hand crossbows for that double damage each round being him a jiggy and the main thing here is with him we are gonna just deal damage with those and we try to enter the combat hidden if possible so we can get in some sneak attacks before like Shadowheart or the Cell can close up with the enemies. And later on if we use the haste potions and action search we will get quite a few shots in the first round in. So for Karla we are gonna make her a throwing savage. She's gonna be a barbarian rogue and fighter multi-class and as I said we are just gonna throw things with her because with Tavern Brawler we can take advantage of that. Just get her a returning throw weapon, let her chuck heavy items and throw enemies at each other. That's mainly it. Just, just rage and throw stuff at other people and then pick up the other people and throw them at 
even more other people's. And then just laugh at them, because it's absolutely hilarious. So our first magic boy, Gale, will be a wizard cleric multiclass. With him we are going to specialize in ranged AoE damage. And with his build we get portent, which is a fantastic feature, because on a low roll we can force an enemy to fail the save on an ally's control spell. Or, or we can use it for a high roll to guarantee a hit when we need an enemy out of our way. But as it is with our dear magic boys, they are a little low on armor class, so keep them behind everyone else and you are fine. And to mention with the cleric added, we get a little bit more protection, utility, and once per short rest we get destructive wrath, which is absolutely amazing, because with this we can just deal maximus force lightning damage and basically try everyone who is in our way. So for our second magic boy, Will, he is also going to be a little bit on armor class, so keep in mind that he should be behind everyone else too, because he's our magic dealer boy who doesn't do anything else. And with him, we are just gonna focus on the Eldritch Blast build, which is his main cantrip there, which we are gonna use to deal damage. He will also have some AoE damage. So he will be a little bit more flexible that he is not only dealing Eldritch Blast damage. But the main thing here is we will just go full on blast mode. And if that doesn't work, well, that just sucks. But we have a little bit more other spells we can choose along our journey while leveling up. So we will have our ways to deal enough damage with this boy. So let's build our dear Shadowheart. With her we want to start right off with the Sorcerer class. Because with the Sorcerer class we get proficient in constitution saving rolls, which will be quite handy because we will be casting quite a few concentration spells and with this we are more likely not to lose our concentration on the spells and have to cast them again. That's the one part. For the second part where we take the Sorcerer classes, we can choose the Storm Sorcery subclass which is really nice because there we get this subclass feature where we can fly as a bonus action after we cast the spell level 1 or higher, which is pretty nice because we can pretty easily position ourselves from one enemy to the next, in between the enemies, whatever, and they don't get opportunity decks. For the cantrips, we will start with Blade Ward, <coughs> where we only take half damage from bludgeoning, piercing, slashing attack, then friends, where we gain advantage on charisma checks against non-hostile creatures, then Mage Hand, which is pretty handy in this game. There we create a Spectral Hand that can manipulate and interact with objects. We can, for example, throw something, we can push an enemy, and it's just an additional turn with the because it enters as its own individual which you can control. Then Mine Illusion is also pretty nice just to have for different situations in the game. So for the spells we will take the shield spell which is pretty nice because there if we get hit by an enemy we increase our armor class by 5 and we will take no damage from magic missile. Then magic missile which is an absolutely amazing spell because we shoot three magical darts and with each of them dealing two to five force damage. They always hit the target. Amazing spell, just take it. So our main thing for the abilities, we will take constitution and wisdom. Wisdom because it powers the cleric spells, constitution because it's important because we are a frontliner and we don't want to get hit that often and of course for our saving throw improvement, dexterity is always important for the initiative rolls, for our armor class and so on. We also give a little bit into strength because we are a frontliner so we want to be a little bit more I would say strong against not getting pushed over or just having the ability not to get pushed everywhere. With strength we get a little bit more stronger in this regard. For our skill proficiencies we are gonna get Arcana and Persuasion. And that's the starting point for this character. At level 2 we will go into the multiclass of the Cleric. And we will continue this way until we are done with level 12. For the cantrips, we take resistance. Make a target more resistant to spell effects and conditions. It receives a 1d4 bonus to saving throws. Then of course guidance, absolutely essential for the game. And then sacred flame, which will be our main damage dealer in the early game. Then for the subclass, we will go with the light domain. Because with the light domain we get the subclass feature Warding Flame. And with Warding Flame we can shield ourselves with Divine Light. 
and use our reaction to impose disadvantage on an attacker, possibly causing their attack to miss. Which is amazing because first off, we are more protected. Second off, if we are casting some concentration spells, which we are gonna do, we can reduce the risk of losing the spell and have to recasting again because they are gonna miss us and we don't have to roll our saving throw. Just an all in all good feature. At level 3 we don't have to do anything, we just get a little bit of stuff like some class features with spell slots and our channel divinity charges, then the action turn undead and radiance of the dawn. Nothing more, nothing less, just keep up leveling. At level 4, same thing, we don't get anything special, just a level 2 spell slot and a few spells to choose from and some light domain spells. But you don't have to choose anything here because you will know every single one of them and in game you can just change them out which one you want to use in relation to the situation. So nothing to worry here. At level 5 comes our next decision. First, the cantrip. What we are gonna go here is just the produced flame, which is just an additional damage source, but not that special. For our feet, we will just go with ability improvement and we will bump our wisdom up to 18. Nothing more, nothing less. Then at level 7, same thing again. Nothing to choose from, you will just get an additional general divinity charge and a level 4 spell slot. And one thing which is pretty nice, we get the improved warding flare. But again, nothing to choose, we just get this stuff. So at level 8, we once again don't have to choose anything, we get a level 4 spell slot, some spells and two light domain spells like the wall of fire and the garden of faith. So then at level 9 we once again get a little bit of stuff, some class features like levels, spell slots and the subclass feature potent spell casting, where your god grants you even more intense power. You can add your wisdom modifier to the damage you deal with cleric cantrips. Adds a little bit more overall damage with our cantrips. Then for our feet, we just gonna go again with ability score improvement and pump wisdom up to 20. At level 10, we will get a level 5 spell slot. We get again some spells and two light domain spells. The flame strike, which is nice because on save the targets will still take half a damage and if you hit it, of course, you deal the range damage which is shown here. We also get destructive wave where we create a shockwave of either divine or malevolent thunder that damages nearby creatures and possibly knocks them prone which is pretty nice. At level 11 you will get a level 6 spell slot you will get divine intervention which says you can cast divine intervention to invoke your god's aid. Once used this can never be used again. So we choose it wisely or better use it wisely. Then we also gain the new cantrip. There are not that much faults to put into because you can only choose the last one which in my case is this one here. So not that hard of a decision to make. Then at level 12 our last level nothing to choose from we just get a bunch of additional level 6 spells and we are done. Shadowheart is finished and as you can see we got a whole lot of spells to choose from one thing you can see here we got a bunch of different reactions here which are like of course the opportunity attack and the shield spell which you can cast up into all of the different spell slot levels so pretty much potential here to defend yourself then the warding flare and the improved warding flare so a bunch of stuff for defense pretty nice so then let's go to our second tank, LaSalle. Fair, we are of course gonna choose the fighter class and for this we are gonna choose the fighting style defense because we are not gonna attack with her, we are gonna keep the enemies close. And this is nice because we get plus one to armor class while wearing armor. Then for the abilities, we will pump up strength all the way to 17, constitution to 16 and dexterity to 40. A little bit in wisdom but the main parts are strength, dexterity and constitution. For the skill proficiencies, we are gonna take Perception and Survivor. And that's all you need to do for the beginning class. So then at level 2 we do nothing, we just level up and get Action Search, which is nice because we gain an extra action to use in a turn. Then level 3, we are gonna choose our subclass. In this case we are gonna choose Battle Master and we are gonna choose a few different maneuvers. The first one is Menacing Attack. Because with this one we can frighten our targets, which is nice to gain a little bit of the upper hand against them. Then pushing attack, which is also nice because there we can push enemies back 4.5 meters. 
if we hit it, of course. Then repost, which is a reaction. When a hostile creature misses you, you can react with a melee attack, a strike and deal an additional 1d8 damage. And that's it. Then at level 4, we're gonna choose our first feat, which will be Pole M Master. Because with Pole M Master, if we are having a Glaive, Harbert, Quarterstaff or Spear, we can use our bonus action to attack with the butt of your weapon. And we also can make opportunity attacks when targets come within range. Just nice for this crowd control thingy machigi where we play close to the enemies. Then at level 5 we don't do anything, we just get an extra attack. Simple, straightforward. Then at level 6 we choose our next feat which will be the Sentinel. And the Sentinel is pretty nice. Because when an enemy within melee range attacks an ally, you can use a reaction to make a weapon attack against the target. We gain advantage on opportunity attacks and when we hit a creature with, with an opportunity attack it can no longer move for the rest of its turn. Again, beautiful for keeping the creatures where they belong. Close to us and away from our range damage dealers. Then at level 7, we are gonna get two more maneuvers. The first one we are gonna take is Goading Attack, where we lure the enemy to attack us and if they want to attack anyone else, they get a disadvantage against them. Then also Precision Attack, where we can just spend a superiority die to add it to the result of an attack roll. Just if we want to make sure that we hit, nothing more special about it. At level 8, we get another feat. For this one, we're gonna take F lead. Where we just pump up our strength to 18, so we get that extra modifier bonus point, and we can increase our jump distance by 50%. Just essential to jump between enemies around, keep them where they want, so we are mobile enough. Then at level 9, we just gonna multi class into the Paladin. We choose the subclass Oath of Vengeance because we are just gonna make a little bit of a damage dealer in addition to the battlefield control. And for this one, we take take the Oath of Vengeance and level this one up. Then at level 10 we get the level 2 Paladin where we, where we get a few Divine Smite actions which we can use to deal that additional damage. Then we get a fighting style to choose from where we just choose great weapon fighting. Because there if we roll a 1 or 2 on a damage die for an attack with two handed melee weapon that die is re-rolled once. Just a little bit more potential for damage. Then at 11 we once again, get to Paladin, level him up. Nothing to choose from, we just get a bunch of different stuff here. Actions, of spells and class features. And then the last level, level 12, will be once again just to select another feat. And for this year, we will take Great Weapon Master. Because with this, this is just a nice feat and will increase our damage potential by a lot. Because with this, if we land a critical hit or kill and target with a melee weapon attack, we can make another melee weapon attack as a bonus action that turn. And we can toggle on or off the additional 10 damage possibility of the cost of a mean minus 5 attack roll penalty. So just situational, if you want this on or off, just choose it and that's less sad. Nothing more to add. So next off, Asterion. With him we can start in as a ranger. With the ranger we get a favorite enemy and in this case we take the bounty hunter because with the bounty hunter we gain proficiency in investigations and creatures we hit with ensnaring strike have disadvantage on their saving throw which will be of use in the next level because there we take ensnaring strike spell. Next off the natural explorer. There we can choose whatever we want. For this case we take the wasteland wanderer of fire. There we gain resistance to fire damage. For the abilities, we gonna put 10 in strength, 17 in dexterity because we are a ranged character here and 16 to constitution. We, for the skills we are gonna choose stealth, insert and survival. Then at level 2 we get our first spell choice and there as I said we take the ensnaring strike. With this we summon a thorny wine that possibly ensnare our target. It is a concentration spell so as long as it is online, up to 10 turns, this spell will last. The second spell we are gonna choose is Hunter's Mark. Then, for the fighting style, we of course gonna choose the archery fighting style, where we gain plus 2 bonus to ranged weapon attacks. Just a must take. At level 3, we get another spell. For this, we take the Hail of Thorn. They deal weapon damage to the target and then explode. The explosion deal an additional 1 to 10 piercing damage to the target and surrounding creatures. Next off, we are also gonna choose our subclass, which in this build will be the Gloomstalker. Because with the Gloomstalker, we get Red Unpusher, where we gain plus 3 to bonus initiative, which is absolutely a must have for this build. Because we can put on a lot of damage before the enemy's or turns is even starting. At level 4, we take our first feed. And in this case, we take our tier Sharpshooter, which is just an insane damage increasing 
B. We can toggle it on or off and for a minus 5 penalty to our attack rolls we can deal an additional 10 damage if we hit the target of course. And the level 5 we get an extra attack and we can choose another spell. And in this case we are gonna choose S without trace. Call forth a while of shadows and silence that gives you and all nearby companions a plus 10 to stealth checks. Just nice to get through basically everything because a plus 10 to stealth checks absolutely amazing. Then at level 6 we are gonna go to multi-class into rogue. And we choose our abilities which will be in this case acrobatics, stealth and perception. Then at level 7 we are just gonna level up because we can't do anything here. At level 8 we can choose our subclass for the rogue and this is gonna be the thief subclass. Where we get fast hands which gives us an additional bonus action. Then at level 9 we get our second feat and for this one we gonna take a fleet feat. And we increase our dexterity to 18 and we can increase our jump distance by 50%. You know this feat already from prior. So at level 10 we just gonna go into the fighter multi-class. There we choose our fighting style and we are gonna choose the defense fighting style. At level 11 one more level into fighter and we get action search where we gain once again another action to use in a turn. Then at level 12 our last level we are gonna choose our final subclass for the fighter class which will be the battle master. And here we are gonna choose pushing attack where we can once again push a target 4.5 meters back if we hit him. Then the trip attack where we can possibly prone a target. Then menacing attack where we once again where we can possibly frighten the target. And that is our dear Asterion build. Nothing more to it. He is finished. So let's build Karla. For her, we just gonna choose the Barbarian class, of course. Then for the abilities, we are gonna pump Strength to 17, Dexterity to 14, Constitution to 16, and Wisdom to 10. Then for the skills, we just gonna choose Nature and Perception, nothing more, nothing less, and we are going to level her up already. Barbarian level 2, we just get a little bit of features, but we can choose anything, so just level up. At level 3 we can choose our subclass and we are gonna choose of course the Berserker subclass. Because with Berserker we get Frenzy. Our Rage turns into a Frenzy. You can Frenzy Strike and Enrage Throw, which will be of use for us. You can also make an Imperial weapon attack as a bonus action. And there, as you can see, Enrage Throw, we can pick up an item or a creature and throw it at a target, dealing additional damage and knocking it prone. Our strength affects how much weight you can throw, heavier items deal more damage of course. Then at level 4 we can choose our first feat. And for this build, of course we choose the tavern brawler because we can pump our strength to 18 and with the tavern brawler when we make an unarmed attack use an improvised weapon or throw something your strength modifier is added twice to the damage and attack rolls. At level 5 we get an extra attack and fast movement nothing more. At level 6 we are gonna multi class into rogue and there we can improve our ability scores. First off we gonna choose stealth and second off perception. And that's all we do. And at level 7 we do nothing, we just level up rogue. At level 8 we gonna take the subclass of the rogue, because the rogue is now level 3. We choose the thief and we get another bonus action through fast hands here. Then at level 9 we choose our next feat and this is going to be an ability score improvement where we choose to level up our strength to 20 for the maximum row and rage possibilities we can get. At level 10 we are going the multi-class into fighter and with the fighter we are gonna choose the fighting style defense. Then at 11 we get the second level of fighter where we can once again gain action search you should know this already. Then at level 12 we are gonna choose our subclass for the fighter which is going to be champion which gives us the improved critical hit. The number you need to roll to a critical hit while attacking is reduced by one. And this effect can stack. Absolutely amazing, so we can deal more damage and more often hit critical attacks. And that's it. Pretty fast and easy Karlach build. Just a typical Froberian build. So next off we go to our magic boys, starting with Gale. We will start with him of course as a wizard. For his cantrips we will take Firebolt, we will take the Ray of Frost and the Shock and Grasp. Then for the spells we are gonna take the Chromatic Orb because it is just amazing because you can choose any damage type you want. Then the Ice Knife 
then the magic missile you know too from earlier then the thunder wave find familiar and the shield spell then for uh, the abilities we are just gonna pump up dexterity to 14 constitution to 16 and intelligence to 16 and wisdom to 12 and those are our main ability points for our skills we are gonna take investigation religion and perception so then at level 2 we're gonna go straight into the multi-class and choose the cleric. And for the cleric we're gonna first off choose some cantrips. There we basically choose the same as we took for Shadowheart. We're gonna choose the blade ward, the guidance and resistance. Then for the subclass we are gonna choose the tempest domain because of its subclass features. Which I will explain a little bit later why it is a nice feature. And as you can see here we also get two spells. First of the fog of cloud and the thunder wave. And the Thunder Wave you already took for the Wizard class, you may be wondering why, but the main reason is that the Thunder Wave of the Wizard class scales with Intelligence and this one here with the Cleric, so we are better off with the other one, just for your interest. For the Deity we just gonna go with Mistra and then we are continue our level up journey. We go back into the Wizard class and choose our subclass in this area, which will be the Divination subclass. With the Divination subclass we get the portent subclass feature which is amazing because after a long rest we gain two random portent dices and during the day we can use them as a reaction to change the dice outcome of any attack roll or saving throw. So we can just make sure that we hit or just make sure that the enemies miss on us which is just a nice feature to have. For the spells we are gonna choose Burning Hands where each flammable target is hit with 3 to 8 in fire damage and Ray of Sickness where we poison the target for 2 to 16 damage. Then at level 4 we choose two more spells and this one will be Cloud of Daggers which is an amazing spell for choke points where you can do some AoE damage for each one which stays inside or just walks through. Then Shatter which deals damage to all nearby creatures and objects. Creatures made of inorganic matter such as stone have disadvantage on the saving throw. And at level 5 we can add another cantrip. In this case we're gonna choose Bone Spell. 2 to 6 in necrotic damage and it prevents a target from healing until your next turn and under target receives disadvantage on attack roll. For the spells we are gonna choose Scorching Ray which deals 6 to 36 damage. It hurls 3 rays of fire. Each rail deals 2 to 12 fire damage. And Misty Step, which is an amazing spell to just teleport yourself to basically any position you would like to teleport. And we are gonna choose our first feat. And for this one, we are gonna go with the ability score improvement of intelligence and pump it up to 18. One thing I just want to quick mention, because there are a lot of spells to choose from each level up. You don't have to go basically through all the same spells I'm going through in this list, because as Gale, you will also learn spells along the way. You will find scrolls and learn more spells than we are choosing here. I just want to say that it's not the only way to play the game. No, just pick whatever you want. If you want another spell, then for example, I don't know, Squatch of Ray, which I took. That's what I just wanted to mention real quick. Then at level 6, we are gonna choose two more spells. First off, we are gonna choose the Glyph of Warding. It describes the circle of arcane glyphs on the ground. When stepped on by an enemy, that selected ma magical effect will trigger. Next off we are gonna take Lightning Bolt. This is the only spell I would say you should take it at this level because it will be depending on the next level up. Because at level 7 we are gonna go back into the Cleric and there we get the subclass feature Destructive Wrath. When you roll Thunder or Lightning Damage, which the spell we just took, you can use the channel Divinity to deal maximum damage instead. So it's just a nice way to use this feature with the spell we chose and maybe a few enemies are in front of each other. Like I showed you in the early quick overview of Gale, we can just deal maximum damage to all of them and basically just destroy all of them. It's just a nice feature to combine the Cleric with the Wizard class. At level 8 we continue to level up our Wizard and we choose two spells. First of the Fireball spell because it is just one of the best spells in the whole game and next of the Counter spell which is also just a nice spell to have because it is a reaction and you can just counter an enemy spell. At level 9 or Wonder we can choose another two spells. First of for this one here we choose Conjure Minor Elemental where you can summon one elemental creature which fights along your side. Second spell we are gonna choose is Ice Storm, dealing 6 to 40 damage, impel a storm of hail and ice to crash from the sky. Then at level 10, once again more spells. First off we are gonna choose Blight. We are gonna deal 8 to 64 necrotic damage, which is insane, and plants take maximum damage from the spell and have disadvantage on the saving throw against it. 
And the second one is the mansion door, which is also pretty nice because if you're finding yourself in a struggling position, you can just teleport yourself and up to one alley to a place you can see. And another thing we can finally take is another feed. And for this one, we keep it simple. We're just gonna take the ability score improvement and pump up intelligence all the way to 20. Then at 11, we once again can choose two spells. We're gonna take Cone of Cold, which is dealing 8 to 64 of cold damage, make a flurry of frost, crisp air, and condensed snow crystals erupt from your hands. Then we're gonna choose Conjure Elemental. We can bend the barrier between the planes until the Disorgen Elemental ally from to follow and fight for you. Amazing spell, just useful to get another one on the battlefield. And at level 12, we're gonna choose Cloud. Kill, which deals 5 to 40 poison damage. We craft a large cloud that inflicts 5 to 40 poison damage per turn. You can reposition the cloud every turn. Then we also choose telekinesis, where we can throw a creature or object up to 80 meter with a thought. Once per turn, you can use telekinesis again without expending a spell slot. So this is the wizard gale build. You can of course, as I mentioned, do some things different, but for this video's purpose, we went this Way. So let's go to our last boy, the magic boy, the one and only Will. He will be a Eldritch Blast build, which I already mentioned to you. It's the only class which I will just go through a mono build and not with multi classing. So to start off, we're just gonna pick the Warlock class, of course, and of course, we have to take the Eldritch Blast. Then, second off, we take the Poison Spray. For the subclass, we are gonna take the Fiend, where we get the subclass feature Dark One's Blessing. When you reduce a hostile creature to zero hit points, this gift from your patron grants you four temporary hit points, which is really nice. For our spells, we're gonna take the Armor of a Goddess, where we gain five temporary, temporary hit points and deal five cold damage to any creature that hits you with a melee attack. For the second one, we take Hex, where we can make your attacks deal an additional one to six necrotic damage to the target and give it disadvantage on an ability of your choosing. For our abilities, we are gonna pump Dexterity to 14, Constitution to 16, Charisma to 16, and Wisdom to 12. For our skills, we're gonna choose Ekrainer, Investigation, and Perception. So at level 2, we can choose a spell. Here we are gonna choose the Hellish Rebuke, where we can react to your next attacker with flames that deal 2 to 20 fire damage. Then we can choose our Eldritch Innovations, which are gonna improve our Eldritch Blast. First off, we're gonna be using Agonizing Blast, which adds our Charisma modifier to the damage it deals. Then the Repelling Blast. When we hit the creature with Eldritch Blast, we can push the creature up to 4.5 meters away from us. Just nice. Then at level 3, we can choose another spell. We are gonna choose the Misty Step. Just a nice spell. Once again, to position yourself, get anywhere you want, and get that advantage on the enemies, maybe the ground or something else. We also can choose a pact and for this build we are gonna choose the pact of the chain where we gain the service of a familiar, a fae spirit that takes a form of your choosing. This can be an animal, imp or quasit. And our main thing is we are just gonna use it in battle and do some dirty work with them so that we as well can stay in the distance and deal our dear earned magical damage. At level 4 we can choose one cantrip, we are gonna choose bone chill. For the spells we are gonna choose darkness, where we create a dark shroud that heavily obscures and blinds creatures within. Creatures cannot make range attacks into or out of it. The reason why we take the spell is laying in the next level which I'll show you in a second. But first off, let us go to our well-earned feat. For this one we are just gonna improve our ability score of charisma to 80. Then at level 5 we can choose a new spell. For this one we are just gonna choose Fireball because it is just insanely good and you should always have a Fireball with you. Then for the Eldritch Invocations we will take the Devil's Side because now we can see in darkness and if we create darkness and others can't see in it but we do then we have a nice advantage about the enemies. Then at level 6 we once again choose another spell. For this one we gonna choose Hunger of Hater, where we create a black sphere and creatures within are blinded and take damage at the end of the turn and at the start of the turn. Creatures starting the turn in the area take 2 to 12 cold damage, creatures ending the turn in the area possibly take 2 to 12 acid damage. At level 7, once again another spell, we take the Wall of Fire which deals 5 to 40 damage and create a blessing Wall of Fire burning anyone who dares stand too close. For the Eldritch Invocations, we are gonna choose the Sign of Ill Omen, 
where we can cast bestow curse with a warlock spell slot and bestow curse we can curse a creature with our touch the curse either bestows disadvantage on checks and saving throws or attacks lets us deal additional damage to the target or robs it of its actions then at level 8 another spell we are gonna choose Light. 8 to 64 necrotic damage. Plants take maximum damage from the spell and have disadvantage on the saving throw against it. Then another feed. And what are we gonna do? We're just gonna go and increase our ability score to 20. Then at level 9 we can choose another spell. For this one we are gonna choose Cone of Coal, where we deal 8 to 64 damage, make a flurry of frost, crisp air and condensed snow crystals erupt from your hands. For the Eldritch invocations we take Minions of Chaos, where we can cast Conjure Elemental with a Warlock spell slot. At level 10 we can choose another spell. Then we take Flame Strike, where it deals 10 to 60 damage of Fire and Radiant. And at level 11 we get the Mystic Arcanum, where we choose the Cycle of Death, 8 to 48 damage. And for the spells I honestly decide between two. One is the Dimension Door, just for reposition, it depends on how you want to play. Or the other one would be the Counter Spell, just to counter an enemy spell. I will take Dimension Door now and for the next level just Counter Spell, but you can do it the other way around, doesn't matter. And level 12, spells, of course, we choose the other one now. And the level 12 for the spells, as I mentioned, I took the Counter Spell. Then we can once again improve our Eldritch Invocations. There we take one with the shadows. We can learn how to cast one with the shadows, where we vanish into the darkness and become invisible as long as you stand still. Then the last feat we can choose would be alert. We gain plus five to initiative and can't be surprised. You can of course take another feat. There are a few different ones, but I think this is pretty nice because we always basically just always start the battle and can get the nice advantage over the enemies. So those were all the builds of the companions. Maybe just a few words to one or two things to consider with all of this. The first thing I already mentioned in the video, but keep in mind that those are just pure battle builds. So those builds are just mainly focused for battle, to improve your combat, give everything a specific role and so on. So your main character should be the one which handles everything outside of combat, in the world, all the things you wanna do. And also to take over a little bit of the support role, because we don't have a pure support character here. So this should be more handled by your main character, okay? The next thing, you also have to keep in mind that those builds aren't like the ones which should be the most overpowered builds etc because their companions are still in relation to their origin so we don't respect them into a completely other direction and just make overpowered builds we want to keep them to some degree true to their origin so we don't change that much because otherwise you could just go on and just take any build out there it wouldn't really matter, yeah? And in addition to that, you can already see, if you are still here, that this video is pretty long. So I didn't go into every single upgrade and being into the last detail because otherwise we would be here in a few days. And we can of course discuss everything a little bit more in detail if you have questions to some degree about, I don't know, some level ups or maybe some ideas or something else, I don't know, just ask questions and we will go over them. I hope I can answer everything, but I will try, of course. And one thing, as always, I would appreciate if some of you think, okay, this one could be better, what is this shit, we can do this build a little bit more in this direction and it would be much better, but of course without changing the origins, features and so on, because we want to keep them. You can write them in the comments, because it will help everyone, it will help me, it will help all the other people who maybe watch this video, but just improve this together. And of course, as I already mentioned in the beginning of the video, you can go to the Reddit post I linked in the description. There are also some questions answered if maybe you find something there. And otherwise, if you really are still here, thank you for watching. I of course appreciate if you would like the video and, and comment and so on. But otherwise, thank you and have a nice day and I hope you can find your own perfect party. Goodbye and see you soon.